How's everybody tonight? We're making chicken. Hey, this is, guys, one of the best. We're almost at the end of summer. This dish tonight is going to please the masses. Absolutely bonkers, crazy good. All right. Lots of you guys. Look at that. All right. All right. The chat starting strong. Can we get a recording of this? Yes, of course. The recording will be posted. Emily, we got to figure it out where we're going to post the recording of this. I guess Morongo website? Yeah, the Morongo team is the one that posts it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think last time you chimed in with that answer, if you want to throw that in the chat, if you have the answer to that. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Maybe Amy, text Emily. Let's... um, Let's see where we're going to post these or because we got all your emails anyway. We might be able to send the link of the recording as a blast to everybody. Right? Yeah. Right? All right. So, guys, first of all, thank you so much. Another great Sunday. I know that for, of course, California is dinner time, 6 to 7. Uh, this event is in partnership with my folks at Morongo Resort Casino and Spa. And or casino resort and spa, depending how you want to depend. If you go there for a spa, then it's a spa, then a resort and a casino. If you go there for the casino, then it's a casino resort and spa. Depend. I made officially the name kind of fluid a little bit, right? So, and because we do it in partnership with them, because we are about to open the marketplace by Fabio Viani, one of the largest, one of the largest food, one of the largest, if not the largest. Food Mecca, eight different restaurants under one roof at the Morongo property coming to you early 2022. I think February, maybe early March. So, and because of that, of course, we do a California sign. We have a lot of friends from uh, the West Coast logging in. So if you are in central time, it's eight to nine. If you're Eastern, good for you. You're a trooper because it's kind of nine o'clock already by you. So it's a late, late dinner but I promise you the dish will be worth it. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, if you have questions for me, I am not really paying attention to the chat because if I wanna look at you like this, I don't see the chat. If I'm looking at the chat like this, I don't see you. So what we're gonna do, if you have a question or a nice comment or something that you wanna deliver to me, I have somebody behind the scene reading all your questions to me. So Emily will monitor the chat and anytime you have a question or something you want to say, hopefully we'll get your comment in time before it gets obliterated by everything else. So now, tonight, it's the night where we graduated to the Italian school of Fabio Viviani. So what we're going to do tonight, we're going to create a masterpiece that not only will be served at the marketplace by Fabiani at Morongo in the rotisserie kind of a steak session, which is a big whole roasted chicken. But because we are getting into the fall, because the summertime is basically over, it's October, middle of October, we are doing also a fantastic side. Butternut squash, caramelized butternut squash with the cornbread and the raisins. Now, uh, one thing that we're going to do, actually, we're not going to use the raisin. I'll explain you why. Uh, my wife loves raisins. I'm not a fan of raisins. I'm not like, for me, raisins is like, like dehydrated grapes, kind of a thrift store version of a grape. I'm not a fan of raisins. Now, I don't dislike them. I don't throw them away or spit them out if they're not anywhere. But I'm not going to add the raisins to my side dish. You guys can do it to yours. The recipe features them. And it's not gonna, you're not gonna die if you don't add them. But because the boss is sleeping and I don't have to feed her, I don't care. Tomorrow when she gets up, she's gonna be like, oh, you didn't put the raisin in? I was like, you were sleeping. And I'm gonna have dinner by myself tonight with a bottle of Chianti and no raisin. So the first thing you gotta do, there's a few things actually, two, three things I want you to do before we start. Number one, turn your oven on about 375 to 400 degrees. 400 degrees, probably best. The second things I want to do, I'm going to do it in a little bit, but what you're going to do, you're going to do it now. Because if you don't do it now, then you're going to get, uh, you're going to get, uh, you're going to fall behind. I want you to dice 
your butter and a squash. Now, if instead of having butter and a squash, like the recipe called, you have pumpkin or you have zucchini or you have any type of squash, that's fine too. Just make small dice out of it. Start with that. The other things I question, I got a couple of, uh, of you DM me and text me on my cell phone. By the way, Emily, do me a favor. Everybody stop with the chat. Stop typing things in the chat. Stop. Emily, please put my cell phone number in the chat. So you guys can text me. We can stay update on each other. Mostly you texting me. I'm not going to randomly text you unless it's your birthday. I'm going to text you. But just put my number in the chat. Uh, the number that Emily just put on it is my cell phone number. If you have any question, just type it in. Not tonight. I'll answer in the next few days. If you have a question about this dish, put it in the chat. All right. Morongo fan, are you ready? Let's get going. Now, first things, open, 375 to 400. Butter not squashed, diced, chicken. I have a whole chicken <clears throat> that is not boneless. I was lazy. I didn't want to bone my chicken. I was like, who cares? Screw it. I'm going to just spatchcock that. What do you mean when spatchcock a chicken? You just cut the chest in half. I'm sorry, you cut the back in half and you open it up. So basically, what I have here is a chicken that is being butterfly. Just half. Bones, everything is in it. Just a flat chicken. Because yes, you could do this dish as a stuffing, but the reality is that you don't need to. You can also do as a side dish, the squash with the pumpkin or the pumpkin, the squash with the uh, cornbread, right? So now what do we do? First things I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn a large saute pan, 12 inches. You need, a, you need a good size one here, right? You need a good size saute pan. Um, I'm gonna turn it on medium fire and I'm gonna add the two things. I'm going to add extra virgin olive oil to it, about two tablespoons. And I'm going to add about a tablespoon and a half of butter. About a tablespoon Adia, and a half. We have a quick of... question. Please. Um, Rust is asking if this is the roasted chicken recipe that you serve at curfew in Memphis. Very similar. So the cooking technique is the same. We, do, we roast it the same way. The side dish and the sauce will be different. We don't serve it with squash and cornbread out there. We serve a kind of a pepper, a diavola sauce. All right. So, but the, the, the chicken is done the same way. It's, it's a whole roasted chicken, gorgeous, beautiful. There, it's boneless because the chef is not lazy. I was lazy. I didn't want to, but I had, a, I, had a, I had a beer and a glass of wine at seven o'clock my time. I didn't want to sit there and bone a chicken. I just didn't want to do it. So we're serving chicken with bones tonight. And it doesn't matter. If you have chicken legs, still going to work. Chicken breast, still going to work. All right? So look what we do here. First and foremost, we go into um, kind of a, we are going to um, just let the butter melt, uh, kind of melt in the oil. And that's important because also what you got to do here, now we're going to get to the chicken and we're going to heavily season it with salt and pepper. The skin mostly, all right? And then the other side. When I say heavily, I mean heavily because two things. Number one, the seasoning is going to stay back in the pan, at least a half of it. And then it's going to get tra transferred to the sauce, all right? And then the other side also needs seasoning. So good pepper and salt, nothing else. Salt and pepper, all right? Salt and pepper. So what do we do here? All right, first things first. Here's what we do. What I want, what I want you to do, I want you to get the chicken, beautiful chicken, and I want you to put a skin down first. Let's caramelize the skin as much as we can, all right? So let's get these. And let's caramelize the skin as much as we possibly can. Now, mind you, 
one thing that you want to remember is that chicken will pop, pop. The skin will blister. So don't stay with your face right here because it might spill some oil, all right? Stay kind of, don't keep distance anyway. You need to go in the next room, but just be cautious as the chicken cook and as you move it, it might spill a little oil, it's just a little skin pop and you're going to get a little drop of 1,000 degrees oil on your skin. Hopefully, it's not your face. Just be mindful. Now, some of you will say, Fabio, why don't we put a lid on it? Because if you put a lid on it, the chicken is not going to caramelize. It's going to steam because there is, a, there is a, the steam that comes from the bottom has no way to escape, right? So if you put, if you put a lid on it, it's going to steam, not caramelize. And then we got to flip it and caramelize underneath. Then we pop it in the oven for like a half an hour, all right? So now, one thing I want you to do, though, is to flip. You have to lift the chicken a little bit. You have to go like this to make sure that the fat goes under and gets redistributed, right? You have to do that. Hey, chef. Please. About how much butter did you use in the pan just now? I did about two tablespoons of olive oil and about a tablespoon and a half of butter. But I'm okay. going to end up using a lot more. So if you want to put two tablespoons of each, go for it. Nobody's going to complain because there is too much butter. All right? Especially because the chicken is going to go in the oven, but the sauce stays behind because we got to make the sauce. All right? So now let's see what's happening right here. Chicken is caramelizing. Not caramelized yet, but it's getting there. So the goal here is not to cook the chicken. You can't. To cook the chicken is going to be half an hour, 35 minutes in the actual oven, right? In the actual oven. The goal here is just to caramelize it, the outside, so the skin, it's nice and crisp. That's the goal, right? That is the goal. The goal is to make sure that the skin is nice and crisp. And by the way, if you haven't, if you have not followed on social media, the Morongo Resort account, please do so as well as the marketplace. Emily, do you mind to check your Instagram and put the tag in the chat? It will be very nice if you guys go and follow both accounts so we can keep you updated with new classes and everything else that is going on. Sure. Uh, you have a couple people asking about the size of the chicken. How many pounds about? This is about two pounder, pound and a half, two pounder, a little short of two pounds. All right, look, here's what we do, guys. Very important. Now we caramelize underneath. And what I'm going to do as this is caramelizing, I told you I was going to do it. I'm going to add a little bit more butter to it. So now what's happening here? Very simple. What's happening is that basically we are caramelizing the bottom. We are caramelizing the crackling of the bone. We're caramelizing the under breast. We're caramelizing the bottom part of the legs. Then before, before I put this in the oven, we're going to flip it again. And by the way, I'm going to add a little bit more pepper. It was like I told you what was going to happen. I did lose a lot of it in the pan. All right. So that goes there. So now what we do, very simple. So what I want you to do, I want you to go on the cutting board, okay? Get on the cutting board and slice some lemon, like three lemons. I'm gonna take the top and the bottom off. Yeah. 
There. There. Take that out. Now we're going to cut them in a couple of thick slices. There, I'm gonna save one lemon for later. So that, we're gonna do something with it in about five minutes, all right? Now, let me remember, remind you, 375, 400 degrees oven, convection option if you have convection roast, even better. Start to dice your butternut squash. I want you guys to dice this, all right? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to get the squash and I want you to dice them. Like that. Small, big dice, I don't care. Just dice them like that. All right. It's important because then we're going to caramelize the squash in the pan and do the and do the the side or the stuffing. All right. So now look at the chicken. Here's what's happening now. It's very simple. What's happening is that basically the chicken is caramelizing underneath. Look at that. Look at that beauty. And so when chicken caramelizes, it puffs up. It kind of gets bloated a little bit, right? Because the juices wants to escape, but the skin is too crisp to do so. So you'll see your chicken start to puff up a little bit. And that's you know, you know when it's going to be like that, it's going to be very juicy, all right? Look at that. Beautiful. So now what do I do here? I'm gonna turn these off. I'm gonna get a pen. All right, so we're gonna get a pen here. Few things we're gonna do in the pen. Olive oil. About two tablespoons of olive oil in the pen. Fresh herbs, rosemary is all you need. I have a kick-ass backyard that grow my own vegetable. I have thyme, I have sage, I got a bunch of everything, but rosemary is mostly what you need, really, all right? So what we're gonna do, you're just gonna put a bunch of herbs on the bottom like this, right? And again, rosemary is all you really need, like that. Put a bunch of herbs underneath, like that. And, and what you do there, then now you add the lemon. You got the herbs right here, right? Then you add the lemon slices like that. Like that, lemon, all right? And then we're gonna get the chicken on top. Try not to get, don't get the juices, just get the chicken like this. All right. Hey, Fabio, we have a couple questions. Please. Um, Russ is asking if what the difference is between this whole chicken or using a Cornish hen. Would it just be a Cornish shorter hen cooking is like time? This big. Yeah. So it's a difference between boxing with an adult or boxing with a child. Everything <laughs> changes. You can be mean. You can hit really hard. You got to fake it. And <laughs> it's really frowned upon. So that means that Cornish hen, you'll sear it for about half the time, you'll cook it for about half the time, and maybe, maybe you're gonna be able to have the Cornish hen not overcooked by the time that everything else is ready. So what I suggest you to do if you have a Cornish hen is to set it aside, don't put it in the oven yet, it's not gonna take more than 20 minutes to cook, 
start, get ahead with the rest, and then do the Cornish hand at the very end. The stuffing lasts a lot better than cooked baby chicken does. Make sense? Cornish hand is like, it's like a Porsche Boxster. It's a Porsche, but it's not really like an expensive Porsche. It's like, it's like a tiny Porsche. That, that's a Cornish hand for you, right? What's the next question? By the way, wait, before you got me ask a question, get the chicken in the oven right now. That's the time you put the chicken in the oven, all right? So we get that. Goes in 400-ish and you're good to go. Question, please. Um, Diane is asking if salted or unsalted butter is used. Or if Diane, not butter way. is always unsalted unless differently notified, right? Salted butter is nothing else than unsalted butter with salt. And I don't know how much salt they put in it. So to me, butter is always unsalted. And what you do with it is very simple. You just use it unsalted and season your food properly as much as you like without having to take in consideration that if you use too much butter and then you're used to season things, it might be over salted. You don't have to alter your seasoning ability because you're using salted butter. Salted butter, the only place that is good is on bagels. Well, salted butter, delicious. That about it. Now, here's what we gotta do, guys. Remember, here's what I told you. The sauce, let me show you this. The sauce gets this one. This is where we cook the chicken. It sits there, all right? Leave it there, don't touch it for now. Oh, by the way, I forgot. Garlic, get a handful of garlic cloves, throw it on the chicken. I'm gonna do it right now. Completely forgot, there you go. Literally, I took a handful of garlic, I threw it in the oven. It's gonna cook, the aromas will come out and then we're gonna kind of cook the sauce a little bit anyway. So it's gonna be delicious. Just forgot the garlic. Um, now, get a pan like this, olive oil and butter again. All right, look at this. Olive oil and butter. About two hey, tablespoons, of, one tablespoon of butter. Yes. Um, Sitora is asking if dry herbs are okay instead of fresh. No, I mean, I guess if that's all you have, better than nothing, right? Uh, but no, dry herbs are much, much different. They taste different. They perform different. When you cook them, they become bitter unless they're in a braise or a stew or a sauce, I do not suggest you to have any dry herb in this dish. Just salt and pepper and lemon. Just get away with it. Don't, you're gonna, it's gonna be funky. Dry herbs, they're not good. Okay, one more while I have you. Um, Jan is asking about your olive oil. Is it Italian, extra virgin? What's your preferred brand? We've had a couple of people ask that. Extra virgin olive oil, I use... Uh, um, that's a glass bottle, but what I use, I use this. This is what I use. I get, I get gallons and gallons of Maolina. So Maolina Luca, that's a, a, a friend of mine, Aurelio Barattini, sell this amazing olive oil. Um, and you can buy a case. I think minimum is a case. You can buy a case and have a shipper at your house. It's actually not a uh, terribly priced. More expensive than what you find in the United States, but also 10 times better. Um, and then I get a huge gallon of these, and then I get like green bottle of shitty olive oil, dump it out and put the good stuff in it. So yes, when you use olive oil for chicken and things like this, always extra virgin, non-pressed, uh, non-filtered better. From Italy, it's a must. Not to take anything away from my Greek friend or from my Spanish friend or from my California friend, but I just think all of Italian olive oil, what would I want to, an Italian dude getting Greek olive oil? It makes no sense. Absolutely no sense. It's like a Mexican guy uh, eating Italian taco. It doesn't make any sense. It stay, you know, what grows together goes together. Now, butter and squash, they start to go diced in the pan with olive oil and butter, all right? So basically what I want you to do right now, 
is to dice the squash and put them in a pan like this, all right? Let me show you. Put them in a pan like this with butter and olive oil, just like that, medium fire. And we gotta start, we gotta start to caramelize them. And, and also, just so you know, I don't care about precision. As you will see, some pieces are smaller, some pieces are a little larger. I don't care because the smaller pieces will almost melt away and make a great sauce. And the larger pieces will stay larger. So basically, just cut the squash in diced, right? I'm not even paying attention too much on how they come out really, because it doesn't matter, right? Hey, Fabio. Please. What would be a good alternative to squash for this? Um, Sue is asking. And we had another person asking if um, you can use frozen butternut squash. So these are fresh. Frozen butternut squash, they're fine, but they will get very mushy very fast. So if you have frozen squash, what I suggest you to do, instead of sauteing them on a pan like that, put them on a tray and bake them in the oven. Otherwise, you're gonna have mush, you're gonna have pumpkin puree. Uh, you have squash puree, right? Um, there is a replacement for butternut squash, no. Pumpkin, you can use it, but it's very different texture. Zucchini, you can use a very different texture. If you want to replace pumpkin with uh, squash with cauliflower, I guess nobody's going to refrain you from doing that, but it's not the same. There is no replacement for uh, butter and squash if you want that texture and that flavor. Pumpkin, get closer to the flavor, not much of a texture. Pumpkin will just get very mushy very fast, which is not a bad thing, but I like a little bit of texture. Anything else, it's a different vegetable. So. So now, here's the principle, the principle of this, right? Here's what we got to do with this. What we got to do now is this. We have to get them, spread them a little bit like this, around the pan, right? Spread them around the pan. And what we do, the opposite that we did with the chicken, we're going to do with this. The chicken, we did not close it because we didn't want it to steam a little bit. These we do. See, look at that beautiful steam there. These we do because we don't want to cook the squash for too long, all right? We want to cook them for only five minutes on medium high fire. Then we're going to add garlic to it. Then we're going to add the cornbread when the squash are cooked through. We're going to deglaze a little bit the sauce. We're going to do all the rest after the squash are cooked. Basically, now we're going to spend 10 minutes on the squash. We're going to spend 10 minutes on the sauce. And in 20 minutes, the chicken will be ready. Let me take a peek at it. I usually don't do that. Gorgeous. Beautiful chicken. Now, must be Italian. Now, here's what we do, guys. Very important that you don't get frenzy, don't get, don't get anxiety and start to shake and move these things around. This needs to be sitting here like this, sweating and getting caramelized on the bottom. So spread it, all right? This needs to sit there, be nice and caramelized for about three, four minutes at least. Then we look at it. Then we move it a little bit, three, spread it again, three, four minutes, and we season it and we finish it up. Now, let's talk about cornbread. It's the 21st century. And although the last two years, they must, they, they gotta be, I mean, I know for a fact that in 2050, they're not gonna talk about 2020 and 2021. The most imbecile, year I've ever experienced in my entire 43 years on this planet. 2020 and 2021, terrible years. But 
But the good news is that in this, during this time, you don't have to make your own cornbread. Society has evolved enough, although we're going backwards for a lot of things, but has evolved enough that we have ability not to have to make cornbread from scratch, all right? Buy cornbread, unless you're a Southern, unless you're a grandma from Louisiana, or you are Richard Blaze trying to win another TV show, or you wanna add something crazy to it, please don't do your own cornbread, it takes too long. There is delicious cornbread widely available and since you have to stuff a chicken with it, you don't have to serve it to Queen Elizabeth on a silver platter, might as well buy a good quality pre-made cornbread. You can even push it farther. You can buy the cornbread mix and then crack some eggs, put some milk and bake it if you want to. That's what I did. But cornbread is widely available. I'm not gonna teach you how to make cornbread. There is no reason for it. It's like puff pastry. I don't care if you're Joel Robuchon, Nobody make his own puff pastry anymore. Filo dough. Who makes filo dough? You're insane if you're making your own filo dough. Like clinically insane to make your own filo dough. I respect that if you do, but who does it? Nobody does, all right? So now let's look at the squash and let's see what's happening. So cornbread we have of about a pound and I'll show you what's happening right now with the squash. All right, so look at this. So what's happening right now is very simple. See, look at that. Look at that, they're getting a good caramelization. That's what's happening. See that? So now it's time for salt and pepper. Salt, pepper, then we close them for another three, four minutes, not touching them. We give them a good caramelization on the other side. Now, at this point, I want you to do two things. I want you to get a handful of garlic cloves. How many garlic cloves? I know somebody's about to ask. I don't know. Get five or six decent sized garlic cloves. For some reason, I got toenails here. Look at this damn thing. They look like toenails. Look at this. Seriously, what, what is this? Look at this, this is a nice guy. But what is this? It's a tiny little piece of garlic, tiny little clove. So what am I doing now? Smash everything. Smashing garlic, I think is better than chopping, by the way. Smash it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There, look at that. Perfect. Look at that. Now keep it there for a second, all right? I'm gonna keep it there. And let's see, let's see the squash. Hey, Fabio. Please. As always, we have people asking about your knife. Yes, I believe <laughs> it. It's a sexy knife. I get that a lot. Now, hold on. I'll answer the knife question in one minute. Let me show you this, this, the, the squash again. All right, look at this. We're getting there, all right? Look at this. Look how nice and caramelized they are right now. See that? Garlic goes in. Garlic goes in, fire go low. Now we close, we close it again. Now let's talk about the knife. This is a Japanese cleaver. This is a Japanese cleaver. It's a very well balanced knife, very well balanced. Um, and that is Damascus steel. It is not cheap and is unnecessary unless you have a cooking show or you're hosting people virtually and you want to impress them, which mission accomplished, by the way. Look, I also have shitty knives. This is a piece of crap knife from a very good school, Kendall College. 
what happened is that I got some intern, probably one of the kids left these on one of my house dinners and never got it back. It, this is like a cheapo $10 knife, but I tell you what, it's very sharp and they can chop a finger off, which is all in matter. This is a showpiece, right? Yeah, I feel like, but you got to spend three, 400 bucks for these. What do you get it? You go to Etsy or you go to this site with a lot of uh, very crafty hipster people that look a lot of uh, beautiful things like these, like they're into like craft and artsy things and metal working and all that. I found a guy that is like a maniac when it comes to, um, when it comes to uh, knives and he forged these, it was like 400 bucks, um, but it's so sharp that I could shave my hair off the arm like that. Um, pretty knife, very well balanced and can take a beating, right? These are the knife that is like, it's like a defense knife. If you never use it for cooking, you almost hope for a home invasion so you can fend them off with that. The things is like a beast. But again, it's a showpiece, completely unnecessary for the home cook. Something like this from a town college, it's all you need. It really is. Chef, they brag about knife like they're freaking samurais. You see a bunch of chefs out there coming with those bags, especially when you go to Top Chef or this cooking show. They got these bags. They, they go, they... They put their knife out. They look at them. They go like this. Who does that? Why would you go like this? What are you looking at? If it's, if it's messed up, you're going to see. It's not going to cut it. What am I doing? Look at that. What am I splitting the hair on it? Get, it? get over yourself, dude. It's a freaking knife. You're not a samurai. You're not going to use it for like fending people off. Just get something sharp. It's all you really need. Shitty one too. As long as it's sharp, it's fine. Now let's check the squash. Look at that. All right. So see what I'm doing here? Look at that. The squash now are absolutely beautiful. So what do I do now? I'm going to get the cornbread. And here's what I do. Cornbread. Let's crush some cornbread on top of it. And then we're gonna let it caramelize, all right? Ready? Damn. Now, I'm an idiot because I'm actually potting down hot squash with my hand, all right? You don't need to do that. You could use an, a, a spatula or a fork or a knife. I'm, I'm a sh I have no sensitivity in my hand. Hey, Fabio. Yes. Um, David is asking why cornbread and is there a good substitute? Why do you want to substitute cornbread, bro? What's wrong with it? Why not is the question you should ask. Um, there, no, there is no substitution for cornbread. Um, do you want to put regular bread in it? Like white bread for toast? Like if you make a semi that we want to use that bread, use that bread. But it's going to taste like it's a, it's a, it's a pumpkin, it's a butternut squash sandwich. Cornbread is delicious. Why, why cornbread? Why not? Now, if you are allergic to corn or all the other things that, of course, you can replace it with whatever you like, but this is not a replacement. You can, it's a cornbread stuffing. The, the damn ingredient is in the actual name. It's called cornbread stuffing. Can you do it without cornbread? Yeah, then you got stuffing. Might as well put sausage in it and you do sausage and, and butter and squash, right? Cornbread stuffing. It's like butter croissant. Can we do it without butter? Of course, you can do whatever you want. It's still a free country so far, still free. Last time I checked. So the reality is that you can do it, but it's not cornbread anymore, right? Now, why are we doing this? And what I'm going to do next is something that will blow your mind away. This is not even in the recipe, but I'm going to give you a hint. I'm going to give you a little tip, all right? You could do it or you don't. 
And if you do, it's only because you like a softer, a little heavy cream. Listen up. Heavy cream in this, oh, first, let me check the chicken. <gasps> Gorgeous. <clears throat> now, heavy cream will make moist cornbread stuff. So if you like it a little bit more moist, then you add a little bit of cream to it. Check this out, very important, ready? Now you don't have, but for, before everybody go bananas and you guys losing your shit in the chat, this is not in the ingredient. This is fine, this is perfectly fine. This is delicious, you don't need to do anything to it. If after you eat it tonight, you feel that it was a little dry and you need that little bit more moist because you're used to stuff your turkey with stuffing and that's a lot mo more moist, you could do this, but it's not necessary. So don't lose your wheels right now. Don't be like, oh, you didn't tell us we got to No, it's okay if you don't have cream. This is the recipe. This is a bonus, all right? I always under promise and over deliver. So when you go to bed tonight, after you eat a whole chicken and get a glass of wine or three, you're going to be like, oh, Fabio also gave us some really good tips. We're going to try that next time. And you do that again, all right? So look at this. And you put it on the side like that, right? Now, I like mine nice and toasted. Look at this. Uno, dos, tres. So my squash are caramelizing, and so is my cornbread right now. Look at that. All right? I'm going to let this sit for a few more minutes, and that's it. Now, but what am I doing now, actually? I'm gonna move these in the front and these in the back, all right? All right, so now what do I have? Got a damn fly sitting on my nose. Well, it's like a fly airport, get away from me. You're gonna get smashed, so the best not flying right here right now. Now, we have the butter and oil that we cooked the chicken in it. Remember that? What do we do with it? Very simple. We're going to add a bunch of garlic cloves to it. All garlic cloves. Capers. And we're going to slice the rest of the lemon. Hey, Fabio. Yes. For people that do want the raisins, um, yeah. Rebecca was asking, when would you add those? So you have two options, and I'm going to leave it to you, Rebecca. If you want the raisins in the cornbread, get a handful of raisin and put it in right now and cuddle them among the stuffing. Raisin doesn't really have to cook, right? Doesn't really have to cook. So what you can do, since we got to cook this for another 10 minutes, get a handful of raisin, put it in, so now you have cornbread, raisins, and, and butternut squash. Or if in your family there is somebody like me that doesn't like corn raisin, you can add the, corn, the, the raisin to the sauce. Look what we did. So now I'm going to turn this up on medium high, and I have capers, garlic, and lemon. I'm going to add white wine to it about a quarter cup of white wine, high fire, very high fire. And now I'm gonna reduce this, all right? So this is gonna reduce the oil, the butter. It's gonna reduce a little bit. And what I'm gonna do, check this out. I'm gonna get a little bit of flour, the tip of a spoon of flour, just like that. The tip. And I'm going to add these like this. I'm going to let it kind of fall like this. Like that. Because if you put a dollop of it, if you put a dollop, it's going to create lumps. But we don't put a dollop on it. 
And now we got to reduce this. High fire, we can turn off the cornbread. Hey, Fabio, a couple of questions about the wine. Stop. Okay. Stop. Sorry. We have to see this. Stop. Okay. <laughs> Look at this. Look how nice and caramelized the cornbread that's got thanks to the cream. Look at that. Look at this. See the bottom, nice and caramelized? Perfect. I'm sorry, go ahead. I had to stop because that was amazing. That's okay, it was amazing. Um, the white wine, like what, um, what wine do you suggest? And is there something you suggest if people don't want to use alcohol? You guys are into the business of replacing things on the red. You wouldn't do well in Italy, by the way. Um, if you go to my grandmother and you go like, hey, man, listen, uh, Signora Claudia, I don't drink wine. And you, you get a shoe throw by my grandfather right away. But if you do that, if you pass the shoe and then you say, my grandmother say, hey, I don't drink wine. What can I do to replace it? And she's like, don't eat it. Because my mom, my grandma is not in business of, she's not ice cream. She's not mean, she doesn't mean to make everybody happy. She's like, take it or leave it, right? So few thoughts. Don't put shitty wine in it. If you wouldn't drink it, why would you want to cook with it? On the other hand, don't put a, a $200 bo dollar bottle of wine in it. It's a waste of money. Replacement, put a little bit of extra chicken stock. We're going to put some chicken stock in anyway, just to finish the sauce up. So if you don't drink wine, because whether it's health reason or religion or whatever is your reason, we respect that. We love you anyway. I'm not my grandma. I love to make everybody happy when I can. So just make sure that you have enough broth so you supplement the missing liquid from the wine. Now, clearly not putting wine in it will omit some of the minerality in the flavor. So maybe you want to kick up the salt a little bit more, but that's doable, right? That's very doable. So now we're going to boil these. And I'm going to show you now. You guys are going to go crazy with this. We're going to do this beautiful tray. Oh, my God. It's going to look amazing. Chardonnay. Yeah, you can put Chardonnay in it. If you prefer Pinot Grigio, you can put whatever you want. White wine. Look, once you cook it with garlic, lemon, butter, olive oil, I dare you to remember and recognize if it was a Chardonnay or a Pinot Grigio. No chance. It's like chefs. I, I keep making fun of chefs because I'm a chef, so I can't make fun of my own, right? I keep making fun of chefs. People that tell me that they can tell if it was a Chardonnay or a Pinot Grigio in the wine, in the, the cook. <laughs> Once it's in the sauce, you don't know anymore. It's gone. Right? Could it could be a Chateau Lafitte 1973. It tastes like vinegar after, after you cook shit with it. It's like the chef that when they eat lobsters, you know, there is male and female lobster, right? It's like when they eat lobster, they go like, hmm, this is, a, this is definitely a female lobster. So soft, so bad. Go pound, go literally, guys, go play in traffic. You can't tell. You're full of shit. You can't tell. Guys, be honest. It's okay you have a craft. It's okay to be knowledgeable. But there are things that you just can't tell. You can't tell, all right? So get over it. Don't, don't lie. Just say, I don't know. I have no freaking clue. Lobster is delicious, whether it's a male or a female lobster. A delicious. Now I know because I used to own a lobster fishing company out of Maine. The only things you do know is that when you get on board and it's a big lobster, put it back in. It had a good run. Don't end the life to finish in somebody's sauce. Just put it back in. And if she has eggs, you get a piece of clipper and you clip off a little tiny piece of the, the shell. They don't feel any pain, clip it off. So the next fisherman that see the, the tail clipped, they know that that's a good breeding lobster and they throw it back in to keep making more lobster. Lobster are like cockroaches of the ocean. They're everywhere. So now check this out. Holy goodness. Guys, I'm about to do something here. So pay attention to the screen. Pay attention. Here's what I'm going to do. Oh, 
All right. This is amazing. Look at that. All done. Ready? Ah. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. Ready for this? Ready for this? I'm, I mean, pe people. Look at these people. Look at that. Yeah. Now what do we do? Ready for this? We move that. I mean, you tell me this doesn't look better than the damn turkey for Thanksgiving. Look at that. Look at this. I mean, seriously, people. Look at this. Try this for Thanksgiving. Look at that. You can do this with turkey, by the way. Small turkey, though. Don't get a 20-pound bird for a family of six. What do you guys are, werewolves? You're going to have turkey for like nine months left over. I just don't get it. I don't understand. That's the one thing I don't understand. Family of six, buy 16-pound turkey. <laughs> what do you guys are, like hyenas? What are you going to do with it? Like, it, <laughs> see, I get it. Leftover, I get it. For three weeks. Look at this. This is a great Christmas dish. I'm going to do it this Christmas. By the way, every Christmas I do this. Do it for Thanksgiving before they try to cancel Thanksgiving too. Look at that. Thanksgiving come before Christmas. We might not even have Christmas. Look at that. Beautiful. Fantastic. Look at the cornbread. Look at the chicken. The lemon caper sauce. If you like raisin, you would have put them there. I don't care for it particularly, so they stay out of my way. Look at that. All right, guys, listen up. God. Oh. All right, guys, few things. First of all, fantastic work. Emily, do you put, can you put my, yes, and there is a shortage of turkey. I tried to place an order for 1,000 turkey for some of my restaurants, and they said, uh, we don't think we can get them. Look, it's comical. Like, it, it's comical. It's like, it's, it's, uh, and I'm not going to go there because if I go there, we have to talk politics. And I don't want to talk politics because I like everybody. I have no reason not to like people unless they run government and they, on both sides of the island, a bunch of freaking idiots, and we run out of Turkey. Anyway, guys, my number is right here 805 991 5126. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a picture of your dish and I would like you to send it to me. You love craisins. What's a craisins? What the hell is a craisins? It's like a craisins. Like you, what's a craisins? Zoom user. You don't even have a name. Your name is Zoom user. Like bro or lady. Your name is literally Zoom user. You haven't even changed your name. Change your name, Zoom user. I... Cranberry, cranberry raisin, Cheryl. What's a cranberry raisin? Cranberry made like raisin. It's a dehydrated cranberry. It's a cranberry. It's a cranberry. So you just dry them up like raisins, but it's, it's still a cranberry. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, this Bobby, are like, we yes. We did have a couple of questions. Um, people asking what kind of pans you were using. Pans. I yeah. don't even work with this company anymore, but I love their cookware so much that I still use it. It's called Bialetti. 
B I A L E T T I, and the the line is, uh, and the line it's called Titan, the new force in cooking. I still remember the commercial I did for them. Great cookware, very affordable too. I beat the crap out of it all the time, and uh, and uh, and literally very durable, very very durable. So now, um, what that's, that you said you have a few more questions. Um, that was pretty much it. Fantastic. I like this. So guys, listen up. Listen up. First and foremost, when is the next class, Emily? I know you guys told me, but I don't read, I don't pay attention. So the next the class is November 14th. November 14th. So November 14th, what are we going to do? We are doing Thanksgiving side dishes. Would you like me to tell you which ones? Yes, we have a few more minutes. You guys okay. don't mind. Um, we are doing the caramelized Brussels sprouts with pork belly, um, nice. hand pressed baby potatoes with Parmesan and spicy yogurt. Nice. Italian pecorino polenta and crispy oh. Italian sausage stuffing. That's delicious. And, and mars uh, mars mascarpone and Parmesan whipped butternut squash. Jesus Christ, how many, how many dishes are we making? Those are, it's four sides. Four sides. Mm -hmm. I like that. We do four sides before Thanksgiving. Boom, now you're going to have an Italian Thanksgiving, guys. All right, so listen, there is a few more questions. Some of you said, can you spell the name of the olive oil? Maolina, M-A-O-L-I-N-A. -A. Send me a text message as soon as I get to it, I'll answer. Somebody was asking about my tats. I had it, I did this in Maui. Um, half in California, half in Maui, my entire upper body. I'm all tats everywhere. Um, but we don't need to get naked right now because this is a cooking show, not thunder from down under. Um, so dessert, I know somebody asked for dessert. Look, this, the, 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 let me rewind my brain. The corn, it's also very sweet. So I feel you don't really need a dessert for it, but if you want some dessert with it, just eat whatever you want. What am I, ace of cake? I don't know, dessert. I'm not big in dessert. I like tiramisu. I like ricotta fritters. I like bomboloni. I like to stuff my dessert into jars and put them in the fridge and eat them with a spoon. I'm not like a baker. Not a baker. I love dessert, but I'm not a baker. So I don't know. Uh, what else, Emily? Are we good? I think we're good. Oh, make a tiramisu, please. Zanetta. Literally two or three weeks ago, we had another class and made tiramisu. Where have you been? Why are you paying attention? We have these every month, Zanetta. You have missed out a great tiramisu class. So anyway, guys, folks, Morongo Casino Resort and Spa. I know that's the order. I get it. But if you want the spa, then I'll put the spa first. Casino Resort and Spa. Now, I appreciate the friendship. I appreciate the partnership. The marketplace, it's coming in hot. Construction is underway. Eight different culinary concepts under the roof of one of the nicest, most awarded, full of accolades, resort and casino in the entire United States. And one of the largest in California, by the way. I can't wait to be there next February or March 2022. Uh, we have a class next month. I think we have a class in December. We're going to do something either live or virtual. We're surely going to have a January class. Thank you guys for sticking around. Stay safe. Please stay free. Most important. God bless you. Enjoy, guys. I will see you all soon. Text me, please. Emily, one more time. One last time. Put my cell phone in the chat. You guys text me. Mask off to eat. Yeah, but mask off, period. Eat, no eat. Take it off. Let's go. Emily, phone number is over there. I love you guys. Thank you very much. God bless everybody. Good night.